Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Lost Bits, right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore noteworthy, scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. In this Lost Bits video, we will be exploring the game featuring everyone's favorite palette swap, Luigi. Actually, you know what, let's save that game for another day, perhaps. Instead, in this video, we will have a look at the classic GameCube title, Luigi's Mansion. I actually used to be pretty scared of this game when I was younger, but now I really appreciate it for how different it is compared to any other Mario series game. And as always, if you guys do enjoy the video and would like to support the channel and see more Lost Bits in the future, don't forget to slap a like or comment down below, it seriously helps me out a lot. And with all of that out of the way, let's enter Luigi's Mansion and find some Lost Bits. So most of you seem to like hearing about the unused audio that was scrapped from the game in my last Lost Bits video, so I think I'll include these from now on. Luigi's Mansion has a lot of unused audio, like 24 files that I could find, so I'll go over the more interesting ones. First up, we have a short Super Mario Bros. theme jingle labeled in the game as Telesa Demo 2. Apparently Telesa is what boos are called in Japan, so it's possible that this chime played when a boo did something to activate it. Next is an audio file named Total Underscore Score, that's a mouthful, which is the non-looping version of another file named Room Space. This to me sounds like something that belongs to Madame Clairvoya and her crystal ball. Next up is a cut file of Totaka's song. Now for those of you that don't know, this is a song that is hidden in various Nintendo games composed by Totaka, such as Animal Crossing, Pikmin, and even Mario Kart 8. Now some of you might know this song also appears as an easter egg in the game if you wait on the controller configuration screen for 3.5 minutes, but this unused version is much different than that one that appears in the game. Seeing as how it's internally named Pianist Quiz 3, along with numbers 1 and 2, it is believed that it was intended to be played by Melody Pianissima on her piano in the game. Here, have a listen. And next up we have an unused Luigi sound, which was probably meant for when Spooky the dog attacks Luigi. And lastly, we have two pretty weird sound effects. First is this creepy sounding creature screech. Now I have a strong suspicion that this screech belonged to one of the bosses that was cut from the final version of the game, but we'll get back to him later. And lastly, we have another rather eerie sound clip. Now I don't know what this is from, but this one just gives me the creeps for some reason. Alright, moving along now, we'll take a look at some of the unused graphics and models cut from the game. For those of you that have seen the E3 gameplay of the game from 2001, you may recall that the Game Boy Horror in the game had a much different display than in the final game. Originally, it appears that the Game Boy Horror had a clock feature as well as a radar system which could warn you of nearby ghosts. This is much different than the final release of the game in which the Game Boy only displayed the player's money stats. Next up is a weird one. For some reason, there is an icon of Daisy left over in the game's files. Even weirder is that this icon is actually just a crop from her official art from Mario Tennis for the N64. I seriously have no idea why this would be in the game. Maybe Luigi was supposed to rescue her initially instead of Mario. Who knows. These three Luigi graphics were also unused in the final cut of the game. Ranging from worst to best, these were probably going to be used for the different level of endings that the player could get. I find all three of these to be pretty creepy actually, I mean, look at that face. Hmm, let's see what's behind these curtains. Oh, uh, hello. Like I mentioned earlier, it is believed that this creepy model was the basis for a boss ghost which was meant to be in the game, but was eventually scrapped. The model is internally referenced as ELH, or ELH. Based on the entry data, he was created about 6 months after Luigi's Mansion was shown off at E3. Although it lacks any textures and doesn't hurt Luigi if brought into the game via cheat codes, it still has some pretty creepy animations. Next is an unused animation for Luigi that was supposed to be seen when Luigi was poisoned. When poisoned, Luigi would lose health rather quickly. Seeing as how Luigi never actually does get poisoned in the game, it is obvious why this animation was removed. Sleep tight, young pup. Have you ever wanted to see what Luigi would look like as a Matryoshka doll? Well, here you are. This weird model is believed to have been the marker used to show where Luigi was in the mansion while using the Game Boy Horror. I honestly just wish they kept this guy instead. Initially, it looks like there were supposed to be different colors of toads in the game instead of just the regular red ones. Textures can be loaded which show that some of the toads might have been green at some point. 
Whether they would do something different than the Red Toads is still unfortunately unknown. What time is it? Unused test room time. Luigi's Mansion unfortunately doesn't have as many unused rooms as some of the other games, but hey, quality over quantity. First up, we have some early versions of the gallery seen in the final game. In the first early gallery, you will notice that these unicorn statues have replaced the angels from the final game. And these unicorns look really similar to that of the one seen at the Bulossus fight on the roof of the mansion. The back room, where normally the final boss's picture hangs, also appears much duller than compared to the final game. The next iteration of the gallery is very similar to the first one, except as you can see, the hallways are much longer. Interestingly enough, we can't actually walk to the end of this hallway for some reason. Even weirder is that if we go through the door, while we can still see the same room from before in the distance, the collision detection still registers it as if we were actually in that room. If that makes any sense. This last gallery map is believed to have been the most early version of the gallery as it has completely different textures, no statues, and an even longer hallway. Similar to the previous map, the collision detection through the doors is again messed up, but this time the intended room is even further away. Saving the best test room for last, we have what looks to be a very early version of the main foyer where you start the game. Right away you'll notice a few things. First, there's a fire which appears later in the game's kitchen. Then we have a creepy floating Luigi arm. This was likely the model used for the animation when Luigi opens a door. Next, we have King Boo without his crown, as well as a candelabra both half-submerged underground for some reason. And lastly, we can see Mario's portrait as it appears after defeating the final bosses. Why are these all here, you might be asking? Well, that's a mystery to everybody. Also, if you haven't yet captured Shivers the Ghost Butler at this point, you can actually still see his shadow creepily moving along the wall. If you try to scan him with a Game Boy Horror, however, the game automatically crashes. You'll notice that there are doors to each of the joining rooms from here, but these are actually only an option, as Luigi can either open them or just walk through them instead for some reason. On the same token, the room at the top features a few tables that have no collision detection, and Luigi can simply just walk through them. Huh. It's almost as if... Luigi is a ghost himself. The room on the left contains the male floating Merlinda floating around by himself. Since he is by himself without his partner, you can't capture him, and similarly to Shivers, if you try and scan him with the Game Boy Horror, the game will lock up. And lastly, in the room on the right, there is another King Boo, only this time he is above ground, but strangely enough, approaching him will also cause the game to freeze. This is likely the object that was used to trigger the final boss battle, but since it's in a different area, I don't think the game knows what to do with itself, so it basically just quits. And for the last stop of the video, it's time to move the camera around and see if we can find something out of the ordinary in and around the mansion. If we take the camera back a bit in the cutscene where Luigi goes to the mansion from Professor Egad's lab, we can have a nice bird's eye view of the mansion in all its spooky glory. When the game first starts in the mansion, Luigi tries to enter a door, but is then startled by a ghost who drops a key. Oddly enough, I was able to find what I think is the model used to load this key, hidden half underground for some reason. If you come back to this room later in the game, however, the key is gone. Next, let's have a look around Professor Egad's lab. Although it's fairly small, there are still a few cool things that we can't normally see. First, if we zoom out, we can have a better look at the lab as a whole, as well as the ladder that presumably leads out to the above-ground shack outside of the mansion. Also, if we look right, we can see the door which leads to the training room, which I don't think is ever actually visible throughout the game. The professor also has this weird sketch of what looks to be Luigi catching some ghosts, which I don't think we ever actually see in the game. Luigi doesn't often go outside in this game, but when he does, you might notice the ominous looking sky. If we move the camera, we can see that this is actually an illusion with a skybox and some fog. The way the moon works in this game is also pretty weird. Although we can see that the moon is actually pretty close to Luigi, if we move closer to it, it can grow to a massive size, almost scarier than the moon from Majora's Mask. Another thing that I found pretty weird in this and other areas is that when moving the regular camera, textures and objects behind the camera are culled, but when using the Game Boy Horror camera and moving it around, almost everything in an area is visible, which I thought was pretty cool. For example, outside, if we move it around, we can't see Luigi's Mansion, but when using the Game Boy Horror, we can actually have a full view of it. Also, when moving the Game Boy Horror camera, we can see all that remains of Luigi is a single vacuum hose from the Poltergust. Hmm almost as if Luigi was a go- Okay, the last and arguably most interesting thing that I wanted to check out is how the teleportation system works. So in the game, if you take a picture of any mirror throughout the house, Luigi will bend the laws of physics and get teleported to the main foyer. 
Even if we move the camera, it still blows my mind here just as much. Here, I'll pull back the camera and let's see how Nintendo pulled this off. Well, I certainly can't explain that. I know there are probably many more things to be discovered by moving the camera, but that'd be a whole other video. There are also many things that I didn't cover that other channels, namely Boundary Break, already went over, so if you want to check those out, I highly recommend you check out their channel. But that will be all for this Lost Bits video guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and check out more of the series over at my channel, or by clicking on the card right here. And if you want to stay even more up to date with me and my channel and see some behind the scenes stuff, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Links to all of those will be in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.